I'm Paige, I'm a student actuary, young professional, living and working in Cambridge, and I thought I'd show you a day in my life today. I've been working in insurance consulting for two years now, and it's been one year since I moved in with some old university friends. This is a work from home day, but I do work in the office on average three times a week now. The company I work for is still fairly flexible with hybrid working, which suits me. How was Cornwall? Did you do the zip line at the Eden Project? I chatted to one of my housemates while eating breakfast. You'll see more of my friends later in this video because everyone was back in town to attend the Jesus College all-nighter May Ball party. Shout out to the dishwasher, absolute life changer and time saver. Okay, let's go have a shower now. While I brush my teeth, let me fill you in on what I do for work. Actuaries use statistics to analyse risk. The insurance industry is a common field which actuaries work in since it's putting financial safeguards in place to reduce risk. You can either work at an in-house actuarial team within an insurance company or at a consultancy like me. I spend most of my time working on projects for Lloyd's syndicates who typically write specialty lines of insurance such as insuring the aviation and marine industries and insurance for natural disasters like hurricanes and earthquakes. My team use various actuarial methods to project what our clients' future claims will be and therefore ensure they are holding a sensible amount of reserves to pay off these claims. Nobody can predict the future, risk is always there, but we can make sure that it's within our clients' risk appetites and also fits within regulatory requirements. Right, let's get back to the mouthwash. I'm a young person who likes to maximise sleep, so it's always a rush getting ready in the mornings. At least I don't have to dress up when working from home. I'm lucky enough to have a separate office space when working from home. It was a perk I managed to negotiate when I agreed to take the smallest bedroom in the house. Let's turn on my work laptop and get going. My working day always starts by logging on and checking my emails and checking my team's messages. One lovely colleague sent me a message checking on my workload. I'm looking worried because not all my colleagues have necessarily been giving me the same advice on what projects I should take on in the next few months, but I'm pretty confident that I've made the right decision for me. I sent my colleague a quick response to explain my decision and reassured them that I was doing okay. I permanently have a sticky note on my desktop which contains my to-do list for the day. It never shrinks though, as I tick tasks off, new tasks always come in. First job is to email a colleague with an overview of the current data process for one of my projects and how I think this could be improved. They had kindly agreed to transform our process to make it more efficient, so I pointed them in the direction of what we had so far. Then I sent off a quick data query to one of our clients. We receive claims data from the client each quarter, which is split by a class of business, underwriting year and currency. After some initial checks, I realised that two of the received files did not reconcile. The goal is to make my data query email clear but also polite. I genuinely find emailing clients so stressful. I double triple check for any typos and the recipient box so many times. I had 15 minutes or so free so I quickly pulled together an instructions email for a junior colleague who I was delegating some work to later in the day. First Teams call of the day is a Cambridge team catch up. Hi Carly. Yeah, good. How are you? I thought the same. Like when I saw you start it, I was like, huh, are you going to the office tour thing tomorrow? This was more of a social catch up, which otherwise we'd miss out on when working from home. We have them in the diary every Monday, but they're not compulsory to join. The Cambridge team is really small. We're down to four consultants now, and so more close knit than other teams in the company. Then I hopped on a call with a junior colleague who I was delegating some work to. They were helping me pull together a draft of a 60 page report for a client which summarised our claims projection assumptions for their classes of business. My colleague was new to the project so had a few questions. Yeah that's correct, once they're hidden rows are all being written in 2022. The stage we're at is for half the classes we've delivered our curve and loss ratios. Does Shout you have any other questions? I always grab a coffee mid-morning. I have my own caramel syrup at home and then I pop a decaf latte poured into my machine. Shout out to Buster the Border Terrier. This is my favourite mug for obvious reasons. Filled with coffee and biscuits, I jumped into my next task. 
A client had provided us with some more details on their transactional liability class of business. The project lead who supervises me asked me to look into how this extra detail affected our assumption selection. I had a play in our reserving software, looking at different blends of benchmark claims data and calculating curve durations. I made notes of my findings to feed back to the project lead. I left my desk at around quarter to one because I needed to go buy some lunch from the shops. The nearest store is two minutes around the corner, which means I've never been very good at planning out my meals. Regardless, it is nice to get some fresh air in the middle of the working day. Whenever I go shopping, I always like to do a cheeky check of the reduced section first. Bingo! Piri Piri chicken for my sandwich. I've still got that student bargain hunting mindset. On my way out of co-op, I spotted someone we all know. Will had arrived in Cambridge early ahead of this evening's ball. No time to waste, at 2 minutes to 1 I was already heading back to my desk for a 1pm call. Had a little bit of a mishap with the door handle, probably should get that fixed. The next call was a long one and my colleague asked me to screen share at the last minute. I guess so then. <laughs> yeah, because we, we passed the impacting way. The purpose of this call was to show the project lead, who is not involved in the day-to-day -day running of the project, what changes we've made to the assumption selections and justify them to him. For example, have we seen new trends in the historical data which we should reflect? They were particularly interested in the overall impact on the reserves. We don't want to make our changes too harsh or too light touch. Finally, at half two, I managed to escape my desk to eat some lunch and see my friends. I threw together a piri piri chicken sandwich with lettuce and chilled in the kitchen for a while. I always like to eat lunch away from my desk just to take a break from the screen. Someone call that a sad sandwich, I dare you. Mid-afternoon, one of my colleagues who was performing a technical review of some of our project work dropped me a message to say they couldn't reconcile the claims data within our reserving software with the received file we got from the client. I double-checked and agreed with them and quickly realised that the graduate I had been instructing had misinterpreted my instructions and run an import twice by accident. I gave them a quick call to talk through where the error had happened and how we could fix it and also had a catch up while we were at it. In the call before lunch, the project lead had requested we create a new summary file which would help us justify our initial expected loss ratio selections. A loss ratio is defined as the ratio of claims to premium. We choose one as a starting point for claims projections. It acts as a prior. After figuring out an approach for setting up this file, I gave my junior colleague a call and asked them if they could help me out. I was going on annual leave the next day, but our project lead had asked for the file to be ready for them as soon as possible. So in each reserve in Q4 folder, there should be this attritional analysis file. And in the attritional analysis file, we do have a section there for initial expected loss ratios. Our 2020 Q4 review, what were the initial expected loss ratios that we were selecting for each underwriting year? But we also want to bring through what the ultimate loss ratios were looking like at those moments in time as well. And this one level factor, when multiplied by your unadjusted loss ratio, will give you the on-leveled loss ratio, which is then comparable to your 2022 picks. So it's as if you're like taking out the impact of rate change and inflation. On this particular day, I cleared with my colleagues that I could log off at four o'clock. On a typical day, I work until at least 6 p.m., sometimes until 7 p.m., but today I needed to get ready for Mabel. This is the most hotly anticipated event of the year. My friends and I are alumni of Jesus College Cambridge and have been rolling forward our tickets for two years since COVID originally cancelled Mabel in 2020. It's a black tie event, so here here I am doing my sparkly makeup as quickly as possible. Emma and Tim were organised as usual and managed to book us an Uber, whilst me and Ed were both running to get in before they went off without us. It was such a lovely summer's evening for it, here's the queue outside of college down Jesus Lane. Queues are a part of the Mayball experience. We eventually made it to the sports pitches within college where the main queue was. We queued for around two hours total and finally got in and had a drink and some canapes. We entered the ball into a transformed chapel court. Any experienced Mayball attendee knows that you run for food first. So here are halloumi fries followed by a waffle wand and then I went for pizza, an arancini ball and an Oreo milkshake. We strategically split up into queues for different 
different food stalls to maximise efficiency. After weaving through various courts, we made it onto the meadow. And just in case I hadn't eaten enough, I got myself a Nutella crepe. One hour in and I did need a little sit down with a glass of water. I don't think I've ever gone so hard on the food before, but there were so many good options. By this stage in the evening, we had also bumped into so many familiar faces from our cohort at Jesus. It was crazy, I hadn't seen them since pre-COVID lockdown. After recovering from my food coma, I got up and danced with friends at the first court music stage. Good tunes, good company, the party really kicked off when the sun went down. I was so taken aback by the number of times I was stopped during the night by people who have watched this YouTube channel. Everyone said such nice things and just thank you, thank you, thank you for saying hi. One thing about May Balls, it is very, very easy to lose people. After wandering around like a lost child for about 10 minutes, I found my friends and we made our way to the main stage to see the first of the headline acts, which was Foxes. This was definitely one of my highlights of the night. The college looks so cool, lit up. I grabbed a dry ice cocktail in Cloister Court after seeing my friends with them and getting jealous. The second headline act was Sigala. The main stage tent got too busy, I got claustrophobic, a mosh pit seemed to be forming, so I escaped out of there and went to queue for the fairground ride. The theme of this year's ball was taking flight, which is why they had a ride that essentially made you fly. By half two, we were starting to get quite tired and my feet were definitely aching from the heels, so we went to sit in the chapel for a chilled break. Not long after, we got back to it, went to see the main sign, Jesus Mabel 2022. College feels like a completely different place when it's set up for Mabel. They do completely transform it with all the lights. I can't believe I once lived here. Mornings aren't complete without pastries, so we went to grab a croissant. We knew to get in there early before the queues. We sat down and listened to some a cappella music in first court as the sun rose. Usually at 4.30, everyone remaining at the ball is called to a survivor's photo. However, as alumni, we've been there, done that, got the t-shirt and wanted to get an Uber home before they got busy. You can never see yourself in the survivor's photo anyway. It's overrated. Finally, at five o'clock, after a very, very hectic 24 hours, it was time for bed. I'd really appreciate if you like the video, subscribe to my channel and follow my Instagram. More actuarial content coming soon.